Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of DMTV. This is the Faces of DM episode, a series exploring the people making up our movement, where we discuss their inspirational stories, why and how they took the step from citizen to activism and politics. I'm Johannes Fair. I'm coordinating volunteers for DM25, and I have the pleasure to um, host some of our Faces of DM episodes. And we are actually here tonight with uh, Federico Dolce. Hi, Federico. Hi, um, Hi everyone. Good to have you. Um, he is a part of our coordination team in Italy and one of the members currently running a DM25 campaign on the ground in Italy with the name Lavorose, which means work if or something around those lines. Um, yeah, that's a word of pain, but basically, yeah. <laughs> Federico will explain. Um, it's a campaign on the ground and it aims to radically change the world of work. And we'll learn about that today. You find all the details about the campaign on lavoro-se.it. Lavoro um, yeah, but before we go into what this campaign um, is all about and why it came to life. Um, let's hear a little bit uh, yeah, from you, Federico. Who are you actually? Where are you? Um, what do you want to share with the audience? Well, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Federico, 40 years old. Uh, I'm from Turin, to the northwest of Italy. Uh, I work as a partner into an advertising firm. I have a background as a IT programmer, and I've been doing this for more than 20 years. Uh, I've been involved in uh, cultural and association site work for almost 10 years, but uh, my political involvement, uh, it's way longer. And uh, as you said, I'm part of the Italian coordination team, and we are trying to uh, make a huge grassroots campaign uh, called the Lavoro Set, which is a, a huge uh, aim, which has a huge aim, which is the change the media discourse about an incredibly important uh, topic that involves basically everyone. And uh, it's so important for so many people, which is the work, the jobs, and uh, the job market, uh, and the opportunity to uh, Emancipate for poverty. Yes. Thanks. Um, you already went into uh, what the campaign is about a little bit. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I can see your excitement to speak about that. Uh, yeah. One step back, maybe first uh, to ask you when and how did and why <laughs> did you actually become a DM member in the first place? Uh, when did you join? Well, like um, many, many others, of course, I've been enlightened by the incredibly struggle by the great people uh, when uh, Yanis Varoufakis was minister. And that was roughly the moment when I started to realize that my view of the European Union was clashing against uh, the reality that was developing in that uh, in that moment. And I, I, I tried so long for, to make my heads up about this kind of thing because uh, my, my whole generation and the generation that came next has a, I, I think has a innate willing to see themselves as European. And we all, we always thought of ourselves as European, but uh, in the media discourse, Europeanists and pro York was becoming something very different because none of us wanted that thing that happened to Greece to happen. And none of us really wanted this institution, this European Union to be the final uh, step of what was the project in the beginning. And uh, somehow I focused, I, I pinned down the idea that in order for my will, my desire of a uh, European Union to become true, I had to uh, get involved and change uh, 
what people were thinking about the possibility of Europe and what we were experiencing in that moment as a, a, a European Union influence in our life. And the Yanis view of that final project was uh, basically what I was hoping for. And I'm sure that that is what so many people want. Yeah, uh, I think so too, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for speaking also a little bit about the European Union. Um, I think, of course, um, yeah, the current situation and the situation of the past years has all of us brought to yeah, activism and um, work for political change since current situation is just not uh, going to be sustainable in any way. Um, maybe going a little bit towards um, the actual current political situation in your country, in Italy, uh, I think much like in the European Union, you actually have a, a leading person of your country, Mario Draghi, that is, um, has not really been elected, right? Like Ursula von der Leyen, uh, he somehow came, came, I don't know, to, through the back door, uh, somehow, uh, into power. And, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about, um, that and maybe also, uh, what the, the, the political situation is in the country. Well, um, no, first minister get elected we do in italy have this system is a parliamentary system where you do vote your delegates uh your member of parliament and they choose uh first minister with a trust vote but thing is this is mario Draghi is the last of a, a small series of technicians uh prime minister and they are a symptom of a crisis of a democracy of the representative democracy, because although it's all very legal and it's, uh, it's uh, we have to admit it, it's, it, it's within the border and within the rules to have that, uh, we are suffering from a huge crisis of, uh, of represent representativeness because it's not ideal that a prime minister can not refer to a single party, not refer to a single agenda that have been put to the vote for the, for the, uh, for the public, for the citizen. And he basically had the support of the media and, uh, of so many parties into the parliament that basically just one is left of the opposition. This is not healthy for the political discussion, for the, uh, political, uh, for the, the trust that the public put into the political field. Because they don't feel represented anymore. <clears throat> I'm sorry. They don't feel represented anymore. Rightly so, actually. And, um, and also because that, uh, support the narrative, the, 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 the sole existence of a technician, support the narrative that there is a right way and a wrong way to do politics without ideology, that the right way is beyond ideologies and it is just the right way to do. And that's false because the agenda that the technician, they, they, they brought and they put in, in, uh, into, into the, into the laws, it's very ideological and that's been proven wrong many, many times. I mean, we are suffering, we are coming from uh, two decades of economic crisis that shouldn't happen if they were right, basically. And. The, the whole, the whole idea that you have to trust technician because one plus one equals two and everybody else who support, uh, others idea are just ideologically biased, uh, poison the media discourse in a terrible way. It doesn't let you the space to argue, to even, uh, discuss about politics. You just have to accept what has been given to you because it was a technician decision. And this is not working on so many levels and so many cases. So this came from a country that has an extremely conflictive relationship with the European Union, which is Italy. Italy has, uh, thanks to a uh, more than two decades of political and media discourse, extremely biased and, and, uh, and 
poisoned to uh, has a, a struggling relationship with Europe because basically every politician campaign in the country against the European Union and then go to the government and then became part of the European Union government and do just what everybody else has done before. So <laughs> we, we have a, a, a common way of saying, uh, being a giallo di fronte, we are a, a man with two faces because you tell one thing to the public, raising the public against the European Union, and then the day after you go to Brussels and decide the very same things that will uh, make your country struggle. And that led to a, a numerous party in the, in the government area, which in time of election became anti-European. And then once they're there at the government, they keep being pro-European, except they keep complaining about it. So, uh, it's a nonsense uh, discourse, political discourse, that led the, 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 Italian, the, the Italian constituency to be split into a false uh, dichotomy. There is the anti-European, uh, roughly composed by people who are truly nationalists, rightly wing nationalists, and people who just have lost all faith into the, an institution at a European level that in their mind, it will always be against uh, the poor people. And there are the pro-European, which are not really pro-European because they don't want the complete the, the complete European Union with our European Union welfare and the European Union rights. They just want this crooked version of the European Union where they, they can decide everything. They can impose uh, an agenda decided elsewhere and thanks to the lack, thanks to the democratic gap. So uh, our way of thinking, the PM way of thinking, it's neither one of that, it's a third way. <laughs> and it's the actual European Union complete democratic one, a uh, 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 united, a uh, truly united, and uh, a place that, that can actually decide for the people, by the people, for the common good. Indeed. Um, yeah, you explained it very well. I think uh, that is also uh, what everyone can read in our new manifesto that we just published uh, this year. And um, you can find it on dm25.org uh, in our when you go about us to the about us section um, to find why we are yeah, fighting for the many uh, against the few, against the oligarchs um, to actually change something in different countries here where I'm speaking from in Germany, um, where you are in Italy and uh, in all the countries where there's DM members. And yeah, uh, there there's a lot of countries where we are active. Um, after, thank you for describing the political situation, maybe now more specifically, because this campaign is about work. Um, so what was it that you made you choose this topic of work uh, as the topic for the campaign? Well, we do live in Italy in a extremely stressed situation on the job market because uh, we are one of the major countries in the Europe, but we don't have the industrial structure of the other major countries in the, in the European Union, like France or Germany. We have so many uh, small, little and micro enterprises and very few big enterprises. And that's led to a lack of representation into the unions uh, for the right of the worker right and uh, to uh, national contracts. And uh, this uh, industrial fabric of entrepreneurs started very soon to uh, try to keep up with the European economy by uh, dumping all the costs into the labor uh, cost, basically. And that's how we ended up in 2022 with a smaller, uh, a lower medium wage than 20 years ago. That makes no sense. In every other, every other country, small or big in the European country, the medium salary level 
rise up even though a little bit, even though only five, 10%, we are minus 3% right now. That's because we had several governments that uh, try a neoliberal uh, politics that disrupt completely the collective representat representation of workers. And that led to an incredible phenomenon, which is the work working poor. People that are actually working are not uh, unemployed are not jobless, they are working, but they are so little represented and they are so little in power in terms of uh, negotiation with the employee, with the employer, sorry, that their salary doesn't even is enough to raise from the poverty uh, level. And uh, that's a huge problem because when, when the government makes his de decision and plans his decision on how to help the power with the poverty and how to help the poor people, how to help the, the people in need. For many, 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 many years, their sole indicator was uh, employment, employment rate. So if you're out of the unemployed, uh, somehow you're good to go. We don't need to think, think about you anymore. But now we have new 3 million families that fell into the working poor area. Those are people who cannot access to uh, government and state aid, and yet they cannot uh, round themselves up out of the poverty zone. This is thanks to a completely neoliberal working market, jobs market, and uh, working right uh, legislation. We have to change that. We have to do it because Meanwhile, this is the reality, but the media discourse is something that I can only describe by Orwellian, because the only thing that we are talking about is how the, the poor uh, employer cannot find enough people willing to work for 200, 300 years of, a month. And they cannot uh, find employee for the beaches, for the restaurant, for the. And they are starting to, uh, like every summer, uh, discussing the po the possibility of giving a visa, work visa to uh, meet to migrants, because migrants are willing to accept such lower wages. That bring brings up the migration problem, and that makes the uh, the racism toward the, the migrants race because they are stealing our jobs except they're not jobs they're slave please they are only accepted because in that way they can come up in italy in the, in the european union they are basically working for free and they know that but they are willing to do it anyway and this is a way to ruin a country to make a people go anger and anger and always more to the right if you don't manage to make them aware of what's happening on a bigger scale. This is why we launched a campaign, which is extremely provocative. We know that. Uh, it's a campaign that, as you just translated it, I work if, I work only if. I work only if because we are too uh, used to accept everything. Non-paid internship. Uh, more than 20 years of, uh, uh, of work a day. This is an hyperbole, but not so much because when you work into the uh, restaurant field, uh, uh, you can do up to three, four shifts consecutively and they adds up to basically 40 hours of work in three days. And uh, you have no time for yourself. You have no time to disconnect from your job. When you do an office job, you, are, you have always to be reachable. And all of this without a real perspective, without a security, without the security to know that, okay, you have this salary as small as it can be, you will always have it. No, you don't have that security anymore. You don't have the chance to hope for a raise in the future, for a, a, a growing to position, uh, because we don't have that kind of possibility because we have accustomed our whole country industry fabric into not invest into the human capital and therefore make them grow, but just to exploit 
the human labor to compete with the Southern Eastern market and Southern Eastern producer, which is nonsense. And uh, we need to change to a revolution, at least the way we talk about job. We need to be aware again that we can fight. We can say no. We can say we don't deserve this. We don't deserve to be treated like pigs. We don't deserve to be treated like uh, meat, just work meat. We have a right to live our own life, to have hopes, to accept that, uh, a level of dignity. Only the offer that came up, up uh, on a very low, at least a very low level of dignity, because otherwise it makes no sense. And people would do what young people are doing a lot in the last 20 years, which is leave the country. Thanks. Um, actually, a lot of things that I can again relate to, since also for part of the workers, the, the same, of course, is happening here in Germany. Um, and I think, unfortunately, it is also part of the EU that, you know, you let the different regions, countries, people work against each other, which, of course, um, doesn't lead anywhere good. Um, and yeah, this is something that we are working against and I'm glad that you're doing that uh, in Italy and um, thank you for yeah, putting in the time and uh, uh, keeping this campaign running. And uh, maybe more concretely now, what is actually the, 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 the work that you're doing uh, with the campaign uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, that yeah, the team, you and yeah. the team. Yeah, I'm uh, extremely happy, happy and... Uh, and a numerous team of people which are contributing. And uh, we are trying to work on a different level of action. We are organizing small events into every city. You know that Italy is a, is a country with so many cities, so as many little towns. And we try to be present as much as possible in every town to try to wake up the population and tell them, you're not alone. And uh, we, we think that we know you think this too, and uh, we can join and we can uh, show to the rest of the country that we can hope for something better. We are trying to, uh, and we are a small tax kind of succeeding, involved into the, uh, with the, the small unions, local based unions and uh, not confederate unions, which are new unions. Uh, for example, the, the unions that support the riders, right? And uh, the, the unions that support the, the field work uh, for, uh, you know, farms and, uh, and uh, all the, the agricultural uh, summer work that are usually migrants, by the way, just like the riders. And uh, the, I'm not saying they were trying to unionize, but in the end, somehow will happen in one way or the other. And uh, we will uh, we will uh, try to run some uh, big events uh, after the summer with all this association uh, brought together. And uh, we will try to do something a little bit guerrilla marketing, like uh, uh, stickers and uh, washable spray, uh, paint uh, on the, the uh, advertisement of work, of terrible work jobs <laughs> that we find uh, around the cities. We need to be heard somehow because we are fighting against a rubber wall of the media. Although every time we talk to people, new people, common people, everybody knows that this is the main issue. Everybody knows what the reality is and very few people are willing to accept it. So, uh, we are fighting, we are fighting a good, uh, a good response. And we are hoping in the end to gather so much signatures and uh, support to ask at least to be heard into the labor committee in the parliament so that we can publicly say what's going on. We can publicly say that economies all across the world found and proposed real solution to this, that some, some, in some place, somewhere, someone is trying to apply it 
and they're given good, good results. And so that there are good practices that we can, we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to see that in other places, these kind of things are working or working up and try to, for once, try a uh, 100 degree and go the other way. If we do that, if we, if we manage to put the parliament facing this issue for the first time, then it will be up to there to reply. They won't, <clears throat> most surely won't. And then we'll see, <laughs> and then we'll see what we'll do with that. Yes, I think. Um, it is just very, very important, especially if in the media there is not much talk, which is a common <laughs> thing, I think, a problem that we have everywhere, that uh, these issues of the day-to-day -day people of the working of the working class in the end are not um, often discussed. Uh, I also have an example that just came to my mind from, from the west of Germany, where the, the workers in the hospitals are on strike at the moment. And um, I'm following a little bit on social media since I'm not there. But uh, I also hear them saying, like, what the fuck? We're on strike here and nobody talks about it. Um, the heroes, remember. They, they used to be the heroes during the pandemic. Yes. Because they were yes. in right. Now nobody listened to them. And then, of course, it's not just Germany. We had the same situation months ago in the UK. And uh, we are thanks to more than 12 years of uh, uh, expanding restriction from the EU Commission, we have downsized our health system for so long before the pandemic. Then when suddenly we need, we need, a, we need to come the people back, the doctors back, we didn't have any. <laughs> uh, so the actual doctor uh, goes, uh, went double, triple shift and half of them burned out because we didn't have and don't have anymore enough uh, public health uh, employee. And that's ridiculous. We are still ending a pandemic. And nonetheless, we still can face the fact that there were, there were conscious politics put in place to downsize salaries, places, and funds for the health system, national health system. That cost us lives, <laughs> big time. Yeah, and that's that's the that's a very sad truth. And uh, I can again just say same happening in Germany over the last years. Um, also well, of course, because it's a global. It's a it's a it's a global way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you out there, if you see this now, then you know. Whether you are in Germany, you know, Google Krankenhaus Bewegung and, you know, support them or you're in the UK or in Italy or wherever you are, try to, you know, reach out directly to workers and try to see how you can help them to, yeah, improve their uh, working conditions. About your campaign, uh, Lavorose, what can people concretely do? What can you tell people out there that are watching now? What should they, what, what should they do? even if they are maybe outside of Italy, but especially if they're in it. Well, of course, um, like I said, we are organizing a lot of events. So everyone who wants to uh, bring this issue to their city, we will more than, help to, or more than willing to help them in any way to come to their city, help them organize and uh, hold up an event to explain the campaign. But... Uh, even though from in front of a PC, everyone can go to the website, sign the petition, of course, sign the manifesto, go look up into the, the five proposal and uh, start to make some noise by tweeting, by directly writing to the member of parliament who are uh, into the labor committee. Start pressuring them, start making feel anxious, start making feel like the public is realizing that this is the reality and we can no longer uh, stand for it. Uh, we can, you can uh, use the tool on the homepage to tweet to the, our labor ministry, Orlando, uh, or to write an email directly to every member 
we, there, there's a tool where you, where you can choose your own region and try to do a little local pressure, even though we don't have uh, a, an election system where you can choose your own deputy, like for example, in the United Kingdom. But still, uh, we think that every, every member of parliament from the right to the left wing can be a little sensitive if people from their own region is writing them to tell them we can no longer stand for it. We can don't, we don't hold it. And um, so you can tweet, you can share on social, you can of course donate so that we can have the resources to keep uh, up this fight. And, um, and you can uh, contribute with videos telling your story because something that we found is that the more you go deep into the stories of common people, the more you get enraged. So we are collecting a lot of single stories, but there are tons, tons of examples of how the system is not working. The system is brought us uh, nothing but misery. And uh, we are collecting a lot of videos. We are collecting a lot of proposals for what the people would like to do if they had some more free time, like for example, eight hours a day of free times, dreams like this. And uh, of course, uh, the more you talk about it, the more you support, like writing an hashtag uh, on Facebook or on Instagram, uh, the, more, the, the more noise we make, the more possible it's for us to achieve uh, an audience into the Labour Committee. Great. Uh, thanks. Uh, so you out there, go to lavoro-c.it, um, support the campaign. It's made by the people like Federico and many others for the people, for you, or, you know, you can join the by the people site and be part of the campaign. Um, I think, yeah, you should do that. And um, if you want to get in touch directly and help out in your city, uh, I can. I will be able to connect you with Federico if you want to reach out, uh, volunteer at dm25.org. Um, I can always make the connection since I'm reading those emails. And also, of course, if you want to help DM25 in any other way. Um, maybe to finish, uh, let me please know what be zooming out again a little bit. Where would you like DM25 to to go the next um, years and uh, what uh, are the most important issues that you think that we should solve? Like I said before, Italy and not just Italy, is victim of this false uh, division. We do have a vision that nobody else does. We, on, we are basically the only one who are truly willing to pursue it. So my vision for the future is to give the people the opportunity to know that there are other options other than those two, that there are a third way, that there are someone who is really fighting for a, a working European Union that works for the working class, that works for the poor, that works for the young, that works for the women, that works for the migrants. And because everything I just said, it's for the common good. So I think, and I'm willing to hope that DiEM is the way we can finally break this charade and, uh, and bring some hope again into the political discourse, into the media, into the people, and uh, into the politics as well. All right. I think there's uh, nothing I can add here of value. Um, thanks. It was a very uh, nice uh, conversation and very inspiring uh, to hear from you. Keep up the good work. And you are there. If you want to join, go to dm25.org and subscribe to this channel. Tune in the next time. Um, carpe diem and bye-bye.